Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to simplechemconcepts.com. Now, today we're going to discuss on how to test for oxidizing and reducing agents. Now, before we carry on to look into that, let's first recap what are redox reactions. Now, a redox reaction is basically a chemical reaction which involves both oxidation and reduction processes together, and it occurs simultaneously. Now, after you determine that a chemical reaction is a redox reaction, all right, you will be uh, aware and you will appreciate that if A reacts with B to become the product, and this is known as a redox reaction, then let's say A is being reduced, if A is being reduced, and B will be oxidized, all right, and this will make up the redox reaction. Now, it's important for you to appreciate that A, the substance being reduced, is acting as the oxidizing agent, whereas B, the substance being oxidized, is acting as the reducing agent. So what happened is uh, the job of the agent is uh, to help the other substance to get oxidized or reduced. So A, the oxidizing agent, will get uh, B to be oxidized, it will help B to get oxidized and itself is being reduced. Whereas B will be the reducing agent, it helps uh, A to get reduced and itself being oxidized. Alright, so this is very important, uh, which also means from this example you realize uh, that an oxidizing agent will always react with a reducing agent. And a reducing agent will always choose an oxidizing agent to react together in a redox reaction. Alright, so uh, in the school lab, uh, we need to know what are the common reagents that we can add uh, that, is, that are acting as uh, oxidizing or reducing agent in order to test for the other substance to see whether they are reducing or oxidizing agent. All right? So let me give you an example. All right? Take a look on the board. Um, let's say right now the, we call this A is to test for an oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent, test for an oxidizing agent. So what you need to do is to choose a reducing agent, use of a reducing agent, in order to test for the oxidizing agent, all right? And then the most common reducing agent in the school laboratory, all right? In the school laboratory will be your uh, colorless potassium iodide solution. Colorless uh, potassium iodide solution, right? In English is known as potassium iodide solution. Okay, so let me give you a scenario. Let's say your friend uh, passed you a beaker of an unknown uh, colorless solution and he suspect that in that solution there is an oxidizing agent and want you to test for it. So we're gonna bring, what we're gonna do is to bring this, all right, this beaker of unknown colorless solution, okay? This is your unknown solution, and let's say it's colorless. You're gonna bring it to the school lab, all right? And then you're going to add, you're gonna add a reducing agent, all right? You're gonna add a reducing agent in order to test for it because um, so we're going to add this and uh, once again we're going to put what? We're going to put potassium iodide solution. Why? Because uh, your friend has this question asked whether the uh, inside here whether there is an oxidizing agent present. All right? So that's a question mark that your friend asks you. All right? Or uh, rather a question that your friend asks you. Okay, so there's a question mark, there's oxidizing agent. So we're gonna use the reducing agent called potassium iodide. Now, before we continue, it's important to understand a bit more on potassium iodide. Now, potassium iodide is a salt solution, all right? So even before you add inside, potassium iodide would have dissociated into its ions. All right, and then potassium iodide is a colorless solution. Itself, it is colorless. All right, so potassium iodide ions must be colorless, all right? So this put the uh, color solution. This will be colorless and this will be colorless. These two ions are colorless, all right? Now, so what will happen, okay? 
uh, when you add potassium iodide colorless solution into the unknown colorless solution, the mixture will still be colorless. Right? Um, if inside the unknown solution there is an oxidizing agent, it will react with your reducing agent called potassium iodide in the form of a redox reaction and you will get potassium iodide over here okay, to be oxidized to aqueous iodine. Right? So there will be a color change. So let's say this is a positive test. All right, though so there is a positive test. All right, what would be the observation? The observation would be um, colorless solution turns brownish. Why so? The reason is because your potassium iodide. All right, has been oxidized to become aqueous iodine. In fact, it's the iodide ions inside potassium iodide. So it will be this other ions becomes uh, aqueous iodine, and you give up two electrons for every two more of this. All right. So if you take a look, all right, um, iodide ions is colorless. Okay. Aqueous iodine is brownish in color, it's a brown solution. So you see a color change in the mixture. So this is a positive test. And uh, what can you conclude from here? You can conclude that the unknown solution contains an oxidizing agent. What is that? We don't know, but we know it must have an oxidizing, uh, oxidizing agent inside there. All right? uh, why? Because your oxidizing agent, which is here, okay, uh, inside here, will cause the iodide ions to get oxidized to aqueous iodine. There are two ways you can look at it. First of all, you can look at uh, in terms of electron. This is the loss of electrons, so it's oxidation. Alternatively, you can look at oxidation state. Uh, the oxidation state of uh, each iodine over here is minus one. Each iodine in a free element, all right, I2 is zero. So there is increase in oxidation state. Once again, that is oxidation, all right. So it's caused by what? Is by the oxidizing agent in the unknown solute. Sure. All right. So that's how we use potassium iodide in the school laboratory to test for the presence of an oxidizing agent. All right, I hope this is uh, clear for you in terms of the test for oxidizing agent. Now, we're gonna test for uh, a, a reducing agent right now and what we're gonna do is to use an oxidizing agent and the most uh, common oxidizing agent in the school laboratory will be your acidified potassium mechanic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase off uh, some of the information over here and then I'm going to put in uh, the necessary ones right? so that uh, you can model after quite closely. So for example, right now you're going to test for a reducing agent. So I'm going to use an oxidizing agent. All right. So once again, you're going to test for a reducing agent. Then you can use an oxidizing agent. You just replace it, right? It's kind of opposite. So what I'm going to add is you're going to add. This I'm going to erase everything. You're going to use um, uh, purplish, all right, or purple, okay, purplish uh, acidified potassium manganate solution. Potassium manganate, all right, manganate. Uh, seven solution formula is KMNO4 equals okay so um, what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, the story on this side also so your friend right now uh, give you another sample of water and it's unknown color solution and he suspected that inside the solution there is a reducing agent all right, so what you're going to do, you're going to add an oxidizing agent called acidified potassium manganate to test for it. So it's add an oxidizing agent 
called a uh, potassium manganate, right? So it's your KMnO4, right? Once again, it's a salt solution. So even before you add into the unknown solution, uh, this KMnO4 would have dissociated into its ions, which are these two, okay? And then it's important for you to know the color. KMnO4 is a purple solution. Potassium salt is known to be colorless, just like all your group 1 uh, metal salts uh, or ions, all right? Metal ions. So this is colorless ion, which also means the purple color from KMnO4 must be contributed by MnO4 minus ion, right? The manganate ions. So this purple. Now, so uh, what I'm going to do over here is, um, yeah, let's say there's a positive test. There's really a reducing agent inside the unknown color solution. So when you add an oxidizing agent just KMnO4, what do you see? All right. Now, let's uh, run through the story. When you add purple KMnO4 inside unknown color solution, it's common sense that you're going to have a purple solution in the mixture, maybe a lighter color, a lighter purple. So um, if there's really a reducing agent and there's a redox reaction, what happens? You're going to observe the purple mixture, all right, the purple solution going to turn colorless, all right, or it decolorizes. Why so? Because there is a redox reaction and I'm going to show you the equation. Now the actual equation when you do this reaction um, is this is whereby your MnO4 minus ions will uh, react in the presence of uh, acid. Okay, it will be reduced. So you gain, uh, in, you gain, uh, use the wrong number, you gain electrons, five of them, five more of electrons, to form Mn2 plus ions and 4H2O liquid. Now, uh, this equation, uh, if you are doing GCE O level, ordinary level chemistry in Singapore, all right, uh, you are not required to write this equation. All you need to know is MnO4 minus has been converted or has been uh, reduced to become Mn2 plus ions. But if you are in other syllabus, you might want to check with your course coordinator or teacher to see whether you need to uh, write this full equation or redox equation. Sorry, or this half equation, okay? Um, if you are doing uh, A-level chemistry, advanced level chemistry in Singapore, you will learn a certain method, all right, called balancing redox equations, okay, through your school teacher. Uh, and you should be able to write this and balance it really nicely. Now, I have a video. Uh, you can check out uh, www.alevelh2chemistry.com uh, to to find out the strategy of uh, balancing such an equation if you need to, all right? So you can go there, which I actually uh, block uh, for my A-level chemistry students, okay? Now, let's come back here. So uh, what happened over here is uh, this is purple, as we mentioned. This is purple color. Uh, Mn2 plus ions, I need you to remember that it is colorless. That's why it changed from purple to colorless, purple to colorless. All right. Now, what really happens over here is MnO4 minus gain electron. All right. So it has been reduced by who? By the reducing agent that is in an unknown colorless solution. Again, we don't know what is uh, that reducing agent inside that, but we know it must definitely be a reducing agent, right? So it causes MnO4 minus to be reduced to Mn2 plus. One way is look at the electron, it gain electron, that's reduction. Alternatively, is use oxidation state. So manganese, the Mn uh, atom over here, the OS, the oxidation state is plus seven, all right? Manganese, uh, two ions is plus two. So it decreased from plus seven to plus two. That is reduction, all right? So what can you conclude? You can conclude, once you see this color change, is that the unknown solution must have contained a reducing agent. 
right? So uh, this is how we test for oxidizing agent and reducing agent in the school laboratory using common reagents uh, such as your colorless potassium iodide solution as well as your purple uh, acidified uh, potassium manganese solution. All right. So yeah, we have come to the end of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy yourself. Signing off, this is Sean Chua once again and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.